Marie has a new house and a new playmate. This is fun. But when her parents realize her friend is not flesh and blood... Oh my gosh, Marie, where did you get that boo-boo? She says, Mommy, he grabbed me. Playtime is over. How do I protect her? Someone's in Marie's room! How do I save her? Marie! You gotta get me in there! something door! Nothing gonna stop me from getting in that room. Nothing or no one. In America, there is real evil. It lurks in the darkest shadows and in our most ordinary towns. Between the worlds we see and the things we fear, there are doors and they are open. Nightmares become reality. In 2010, the Barber family, Olivia, Jesse, and five-year-old daughter Marie, move out of Olivia's parents' house and into their own home. Our house was a cute little ranch-style house. It was perfect for us just starting our family. Little, tiny, comfortable, and cozy. We were both excited about this new house. These are the ones you're looking for? Yep, those are them. It was our own, it was gonna be ours. It was all for us to, to grow as a family. I believe this is yours, young lady. I almost tripped on it in the stairway. Thanks, Daddy. Mommy, mm -hmm. can I go out there to play? Marie is a very active child. She's very fun-loving. Sure, but just stay where I can see you. I'll be out there in a few minutes. Okay, kiddo, give Daddy a kiss. I've gotta to go to work. Even though she's only five, I've noticed you know, with her going to school now, she makes friends fairly easy. Just an outgoing kid. Jesse, my childhood sweetheart. I knew he was just going to turn out to be this fantastic provider, husband, father, friend. But uh, what about me? I'm going off to work without even a goodbye. She's my whole everything. Get out of here. The town of Elkton sits on the Chesapeake Bay, an hour drive from both Baltimore and Philadelphia. Elkton is a very small town. Pretty much everybody knows everybody. It has that almost like a rustic charm to it. We thought it was a safe neighborhood. We thought it was gonna be a great place to start our family. Having our daughter grow up here, all her memories were going to be here. She was gonna have friends here. She was gonna to go to school here. We thought it was going to be forever. Marie loved to play outside in the backyard. She had a driveway she could ride, her bike on. She had a swing set. As long as she was outside, she was happy. And the backyard proves to be the perfect playground for neighborhood kids. There was one day Marie was playing. I went to go check on her. My second favorite color is green. She was having a conversation. Hey, sweetie. Who are you talking to? My friend Jackson. Jackson, huh? Where's Jackson from? He lives here. Oh, in the neighborhood. Well, that's nice. In that moment, I was really starting to get excited. She was playing with the neighborhood kids because she was adjusting. You know, next time he comes to play, I'd like to meet him. Come on, let's go get some lunch.
To the barbers, the neighborhood is finally starting to feel like home. Until a few nights later. When I woke up, I was scared to death. I couldn't fathom somebody beating on somebody's wall, <laughs> you know, in the middle of the night. It sounded like somebody's hand was hitting the side of the house. Hmm. What's going on? Did you hear that banging on the wall? What banging? Something banged on the wall. I was still kind of groggy because I was woken from a dead sleep. It took me a few seconds to register what she was trying to tell me. She was hearing banging. Honey, maybe it's just some kids playing ball outside. It's OK. All right? It's OK. I'll go take a look around. I went into protective mode. I've checked room after room. There was nobody outside. There was nobody in the house. I couldn't come up with anything. I didn't find anybody. OK. Olivia Barber is thrilled. Her five-year-old daughter, Marie, has made her first friend in their new neighborhood. Fun. Who are you talking to? My friend, Jackson. When Marie first started talking about Jackson, it was how awesome he was, how he wanted to play. He liked one things that she liked to do. There was one day Marie was playing. I went to go check on her. Is it silly? Marie? When I walked in, she was having a conversation. Hi. Hey, Mom. Baby, who are you talking to? My friend Jackson. You mean the boy you were playing with the other day outside? Yes. Suddenly, Olivia realizes Jackson may not be real. I'm like, oh, you have an imaginary friend. And she says, no, Mama, him's real. Him's right there. Right there, don't you see? There was nobody there but me and her. 
I had a feeling that something just wasn't right. Okay. Yeah. Mommy will be just down the hall. I'll save you. So it looks like we're going back next week to do another building. Something weird happened today. I found Marie talking to someone. She said it's her new friend. It's like a full conversation. No one was there. My opinion was, she's a kid. She's an only child in the house right now. Maybe it was just an imaginary friend. Yeah, just somebody to play with. I don't know. It felt weird. Honey, you're overreacting. I actually was thinking it's a good thing that she has an imagination. It just means that there's a creative side to her personality. She's adjusting. So I decided, don't worry, give it some time, it'll be okay. Right. You win. <laughs> I was kind of hoping that as she got older, the whole Jackson thing would just kind of fade away. Hey, sweetie. Do you have a bad dream? Come here. She was playing in her bedroom at least during the day, but at night, Marie wanted no part of her bedroom. She didn't want to sleep in there. She had to be where Mommy and Daddy were. I want to stay with you, Mommy. Oh, it's going to be OK, OK, sweetie? The barbers come up with a solution setting up Marie's old baby monitor in her bedroom. We put her baby monitor back in her room because we thought it was going to be a comforting tool for her.
For weeks, five-year-old Marie has been having trouble sleeping in her new house. I really thought there was someone in my house. I was literally terrified. Sound asleep. Walked in her room, she was sound asleep. I mean, nobody in there. Quiet. Check the closet. Okay. Are you sure you heard something? I know what I heard. There's something in this room. It was kind of deep and kind of gravelly. But I could definitely tell it was a man's voice coming through the monitor. Maybe it was a malfunction or something. I kept trying to come up with reasoning for it. There's got to be an explanation. Come on. Let's go to bed. Jesse said, baby, I told you there's nobody in here. Everything is OK. Fine. Come on, baby. Shh. Mommy's here. Mommy's here. That's right. That's right. Olivia tries to convince herself that this has all been a figment of her imagination. He was going to tell me I was just being crazy. We just moved in, and I just needed to adjust. I felt alone, and I had the feeling that something's not right here. It was really getting to the point that I did not want to live there anymore. I was petrified. Do you want the crust cut off? Yes, please. Just the way you like it. <laughs> oh my gosh, Marie. Where did you get that boo-boo? I don't know. Marie had bruises that were not there when I gave her a bath the night before. I don't know where these bruises are coming from. You know, I'm getting scared. I started asking her, Marie, did you fall down? Did you walk into something? Did somebody hit you? She would say, no, I didn't fall, or no, I didn't walk into anything. But she wouldn't tell me if somebody was hitting her. Honey, these bruises have to come from somewhere. And mommy needs to know. I don't know. She was actually getting to the point that she was getting mad at me. I was terrified for Marie. I didn't know how to protect her. I didn't know how to keep her from getting hurt. Well, honey, you know you can tell mommy anything, OK? Let me go get you some juice.
Marie? Marie? Where are you? Marie? 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 I was starting to panic. Marie? I was getting ready to go into a panic attack. Marie! Right there, don't you see? Honey. He says I have to go with him. Go where? Up there. To heaven. Little Marie has been playing with an imaginary friend named Jackson. He's over there, Mommy. It's been all fun and games until now. He says I have to go with him. Go where? Where, Marie? Where does Jackson want to take you? Up there. I was horrified because to me it sounded like my child just told me she wanted to die. Marie, you are not to play with Jackson anymore. No, no more. I pretty much told her, this is it. This friendship is done. I don't want you talking to him. I, I don't want you going anywhere with him. I don't want him around anymore. Come on. Not knowing what to do, Olivia anxiously waits for her husband to come home from work. Oh my God, Jesse. What's wrong? Uh, Marie disappeared today. I found her outside playing with Jackson. I, he said. She said he he wants to take her to heaven. I don't know what's going on here, honey, but I'm really scared. You're gonna think I'm crazy, but I think Jackson is a ghost. There's someone, there's something in this house. I was kind of beside myself. I didn't know what to think. I try to calm her down about it, try to reason with her to tell her his kid being a kid. Honey. You know she'll outgrow this Jackson thing. It's just a phase. It's not a phase, Jesse. I felt it too. I think the house is haunted. It's OK. Let's go inside. Let's go talk about this. For the next few days, the stress level in the house is at an all-time high. At this point, Jesse and I are hardly even talking. He'd come home from work, I'd say dinner's done, he'd say okay. That, and unless we were talking about Marie, that was pretty much the extent of the conversation. Our house felt gloomy, it felt unwelcoming, and it just felt like it was sucking life right out of us. She was really stressed. I was always tired. 
So it put a stress on us as a couple. It's frustrating. I didn't want to lose my wife or my daughter over this. Hey, Jesse. Hey, Sam. Hey, Sam. How long have you lived here? Over 20 years. I talked to a few of the neighbors that have been living in the neighborhood for quite a while to find out maybe, yeah, they can tell me something about people that may have lived there. Anything strange ever happened in this house? <laughs> no. Some crazy old guy lived there. He lived like a hermit. He never talked to anyone. Hated all the neighbors, especially the kids. He kept to himself. In fact, I don't even think he had uh, a wife or anything there. Come out and did his yard work, and that would be the extent of seeing him. Whatever happened to him? Hmm. I don't know. One day, we didn't see him anymore, so we just thought he died. The house was up for sale. Some investors bought it, and they started leasing it out. Why, is something strange going on? Now, just getting used to the house. Although Jesse doesn't believe the old man is haunting his home, he decides to keep what he's heard to himself. I didn't want to tell Olivia because she was already underneath a lot of stress with the situation. I didn't want to add more to it. There was no real reason for me to say anything about it. Mommy says you can't be in here anymore. Go away. Go away. Oh, my God. It's Marie. An entity inside the barber home is playing dangerous tricks on five-year-old Marie. Somebody's trying to kill her and not being able to get in. That is like every worst fear and nightmare a parent has. How do I save her? How do I protect her? The look on that baby's face. I'll never forget it. There was nothing gonna stop me from getting in that room. Nothing or no one. It's okay, baby. We're here right now, okay? Uh, Jesse. Look. Lean your head back, baby. Oh. 
when I seen the marks on her neck, I, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. They were large. I mean, you can obviously tell that was hands. Marie, <laughs> Marie, honey, what happened? Jackson tried to choke me. She says, Mommy, he grabbed me, and he pulled me to the floor by my throat. She said him was trying to choke me because I told him I didn't want him here anymore. That was the most terrifying, upsetting experience I've ever had in my life. Somebody. In that moment, there was no doubt in my mind that Jackson was something in that house that was very dangerous. The, the windows are locked. There's no way anyone could have gotten in. There's no way Marie could have moved that heavy dresser. After what all Lib has been trying to tell me, that reality just sunk in, that this was happening. You coward! I lost my mind. I totally lost my mind and it exploded. Pick it on a tiny child! I cussed him. I called him all kinds of names. You want to choke someone? Choke me! I was trying so hard to get him to leave her alone. Daddy, calm down. You stay out of this. I'll handle this. Knowing that I can't protect her, I can't fight off what's there, I feel powerless. It makes, it makes me almost feel worthless. family reaches out to the Dover Paranormal Research Team. We need to find somebody to come and help. We got to do something about it. It stops now. Our goal is to try to provide as much help as we can, as quickly as we can. Thank you for coming so quickly. I could tell she was very upset. She was very anxious. Donna's got to walk through the house to see if she senses anything or picks up any impressions. I just kind of looked at Tom for a minute, and I'm like, he honestly believes me. Maybe I'm not going crazy like I thought I was. Why don't we sit and chat while Donna does her work? I'd like to hear more about what you're experiencing. Being a third generation Wiccan means that my grandmother was Wiccan, my mother was Wiccan, and I'm Wiccan. We believe that everything has a soul and a right to live, and that nothing should be killed unless it's for food, and you should always give something back to the earth. When I walk into a home and there is a spirit there, I feel a humming. I can't really explain it. It's like a pressure almost. It is a very intense feeling, and it just builds as I get closer to where the spirit is. And that's kind of the feelings that I got as I got closer to Maria's room. First, Donna sees an innocent little boy. As soon as I saw him, I knew that it was Jackson, the spirit that Marie had seen. But then, the ghost reveals his true identity. Good morning, children. I knew that he was very strong and I felt that he was very angry.
For more haunting, visit destinationamerica.com. A spiritual investigator has seen the ghost haunting the barber home. It's the spirit of a bitter old man who used to live in the house and despises kids. Good for nothing, children. He was in the corner of Marie's room and he was very angry. Get out of my house! She fears five-year-old Marie is in danger. Marie's family still thinks Jackson is a young child, but the truth is even more shocking. There's a spirit of a man in your house. You mean a, a, a little boy? No, it's a man. He's older and very unhappy. It's very angry. He doesn't want you here. To be told that this is not a child terrorizing another child. This is a full-grown man terrorizing my daughter. My heart just felt like it broke all over again. I was petrified. But why is this ghost disguising himself? And what are his true intentions with Marie and her parents? A spirit can present themselves in many ways, especially to children. And he did present himself as a friend, because that would be someone that she would trust. I believe that Jackson actually lived in the home. I believe that he was a loner. I don't think he had a close relationship with anyone. I think he was angry in life and angry in death. So why would he be drawn to Marie? Because she could see him. And I believe that he wanted to use that when Marie pulled away from him, go away. It made him very angry. They have a loving family, and that angered him because he didn't have that in life. He truly did not want them there. He hurt her. <laughs> Fear made him stronger. He doesn't want you here. This attack on Marie is very serious. Jackson was trying to disguise himself as a young boy to make friends with her so he could carry out whatever dastardly deeds he felt he wanted to do. We need to get rid of him now. He needs to be gone from this house. Tom, I think we need to do a cleansing. Donna instructs the family to stick together during the cleansing, no matter what. Donna's going to come in, and she'll give us instructions as to what we're going to be doing, OK? OK. And she's been through this many times before, so you don't have to be worried. OK, Marie. For Marie, she prepares a special Wiccan spray, using spices and holy water to serve as a weapon against the ghost who attacked her. Take this spray. And whenever you feel scared, you spray it. And in your heart, you tell Jackson to go away. And this is a prayer that we'll be saying during this ceremony. And Tom is going to light the sage. It's very powerful for clearing negative entities from a, from a space. All right, if you'll say it with me. Divine God. goddess, goddess God divine. divine, divine God. God. God divine, if evil dwells within this space, make it leave this place. This is my house. So let so it be. be. Keep going. Divine goddess, God. goddess, goddess divine. divine. Get out of my house. Divine God, God divine, if evil dwells within this space, make, make it leave this place. place. Marie, you have to tell Jackson to leave. She was scared. I mean, she was very scared. You can do this. Tell Jackson to go away. Spray it at him. 
Good girl, tell him to go away. Go away. Again. Go away. When I'm doing a cleansing, it's very intense. My sole purpose is to drive him out of that room. And Jackson did not want to leave that room. Divine, divine, divine goddess, goddess, goddess divine. Divine God, God divine. If evil dwells within this space, make it in this place. So it be. He's gone. It's over. He's moved on. <laughs> when she was finished, I feel like this big, huge, dark cloud has just been lifted from our home. It was amazing. Then I looked at Jesse and I said, uh, it's going to be OK now. I was empowered again. Being the dad, the protector, it gave me that back. Thank you. <laughs> What do you have there? Six pieces. You're doing so good. To see our little girl go back to the way she was before, that was the best feeling, the absolute best feeling ever. I'm needing this piece right here, but I can't seem to find it. <laughs> it's right where? Is Daddy hiding a piece from me with this piece? Me and Olivia, the history we've had, through all the stuff we've been thrown at. This is just another stepping stone. It's made us that much more stronger, much more connected with one another. I have always believed in the paranormal. Growing up, my belief was they're all about fun and games. They're not going to hurt you. Ooh. I have things in my favorite door. OK. I never dreamed that they could hurt you. Now, I have a whole other outlook on it. If you are miserable in this life, you're going to be miserable in the afterlife. There are ones out there that could probably kill you. It's done, it's over, it's behind us. And I don't ever want to experience it again. teens make contact with the other side. It's all fun and games. If you are here, make your presence known. Something else was in the room with us at that moment. Are you here? Give us a sign. It was thrilling. We've contacted somebody. Until someone gets hurt. It was becoming more invasive. It was hurting people. It was something unholy, something dark and hateful. Can they close the door before it's too late? In America, there is real evil. It lurks in the darkest shadows and in our most ordinary towns. Between the worlds we see, the things we fear. There are doors when they are opened. Nightmares become reality. Carl Johnson is convinced his house is haunted. As long as I can remember, there was strange activity in that house. We would hear footsteps, the sound of somebody walking around, very distinct.
are you doing up? I kept hearing noises outside my room, like someone was walking. Honey, you know there's nothing to worry about. It's harmless. Come on, let's get back to bed. It's 1971. 16-year-old Carl lives in the house with his twin brother Keith, his 14-year-old sister Cynthia, and their parents. My household in 1971 was very interesting. It was a beautiful house. We had a wonderful family. Hey, kiddos. My mom and dad, it was kind of like leave it to beaver, if you will. They were wonderful parents. You're home early. Yeah, but I have to go back in on Saturday. My dad was very religious in the choir at his church, and they went square dancing. And it was just the typical mom and dad of the day. Does that mean Keith and I can go to the movies then? You need to ask your father. But you are late for the bus this morning. Late? Yeah, I couldn't sleep last night. I missed my alarm. Carl had a visit from the family ghost last night. He was quite startled. No, I wasn't. I was just, I don't know. It was just weird. Oh, nonsense. There's nothing in this house except for three ornery children. Come on, kids. Let's wash up for dinner. Got something good. My parents, they made the best of it. Joking about the ghost. It's a friendly ghost. It's not going to hurt us. Did you get everything? Yeah. Got it. All right, good. All right. Don't want to be late. OK, kids, we're headed out for our dance lesson. Mm -hmm. We'll be back by 10, and I expect you all in bed when I get home. No horseplay. Have fun. OK. But Carl has something more serious in mind. While his parents are gone, he is determined to get to the bottom of what's been going on in the house. What are you looking for? This. Let's set it up over here. The spirit board. It's kind of the rage. A lot of people had a spirit board, a talking board in their house. My mother had had one when she was a little girl. Uh, Keith, can you get some candles? It became a project of interest. We're going to find out what these spirits want what they are, who they are, why are they here? Are you guys ready? We are calling upon the spirits of this house. If you are here, make your presence known. Nothing's happening. Just wait. If you are here, make your presence known. All of a sudden, it feels like your hands are being guided and not pushed around so much, but just a very subtle guidance. Carl, stop moving it. I swear I didn't do it. It was thrilling. That's basically how it all started. We weren't afraid of it. We liked it. And it was just something that piqued our interest at an early age. Who are you? S. 
Y. L. It spelled out the name Sylvia. She was like a spirit of the board, if you will. How did you die? The more it communicated, the more I began thinking this is a real person, a personality that is communicating. Hey, I don't think we should be doing this. It's fine. Don't be such a scaredy cat. We want to meet you. Do you live here? C-E-L-L-A-R. The planchette spelled out cellar. What do you guys say? Should we do it? No way! It's a cellar? <sighs> You're such a chicken. Come on, Cindy. We went to the top of the basement stairs. Sylvia? Are you here? If you're here, give us a sign. And all of a sudden, we heard three knocks. She's really here. Come on. She's here. I know it. Now we knew it wasn't just something in our minds. We weren't imagining this. Something was in the house that could communicate with us, that was willing to be known. This was fascinating. It was addictive. I looked around, and nothing could have caused that rapping sound. I had an eerie sensation I had never experienced before. I felt that strong sensation of being watched as if there were eyes on me. For as long as the Johnson kids can remember, their Rhode Island home has been haunted. Now they believe they've made contact with a spirit from the other side. It was amazing. It was spooky, but it's kind of fun to be a little scared. Over the next few weeks, the teens hold regular spirit board sessions in attempts to communicate with Sylvia. We decided that since we had had this breakthrough that we were going to use the board more frequently. I want her to show us that she's real. Tell her. Tell her to give us a sign. Like what? I don't know. If you're real, make the phone ring.
It's not working. The planchette went to S, but then instead of spelling out Sylvia, it went to S U S. Susie? S U S. It was my girlfriend, Susie. I felt astonished just as much as he did. I really felt that something else was in the room with us at that moment. Hey, I'm gonna have to call you right back, okay? Okay, bye. It really happened. It was her, it was Sylvia. I, can you believe it? We talked to a ghost. No, I'm not doing this anymore. It's creepy and it's not safe. At 16 years old, that was making me very, very nervous. I must say, I really wasn't frightened. It was more of a, like, wow, this is great. We've contacted somebody. Come on. But could Keith's instincts be right? Could they be playing with fire? There was what sounded to be a woman's voice outside the window, <laughs> laughing, cackling. <laughs> it came closer and closer, right up to the window. Came to one window, began laughing. <laughs> came to the other window, stopping to laugh at each one. Johnson has just made an encounter with a haunting presence. I really felt that was directed at me and that it was truly trying to terrorize me. There was no way I was asleep. I was wide awake. My heart was pounding. Honey, what's wrong? What's wrong? Why are you yelling? And why is your radio on? I heard someone laughing outside my window. 
It was all around me. It was like someone was watching me. What's wrong? Is he okay? And then my radio just turns on by itself. Someone was in my room. I was concerned for Keith because he's not a reactionary. Something was really bothering him. What do you mean someone was in your room? It was, uh, I don't know, a ghost? All right, that's enough of this ghost talk. There's nothing in your room, and there's nothing in this house. Let's get back to bed. I felt frustrated that they didn't believe me. I wasn't sleepwalking. I wasn't imagining. I was truly terrified because of what I'd experienced while I was wide awake. There's no doubt, and I know to this day I was wide awake. You OK? In a way, I felt that my family was there for me. Now thoroughly terrified, the teens try a new approach. My brother and my sister and I, we turn to prayer. We turn to prayer as a defense against whatever was there. I had a cross that was my grandmother's, and I started to wear it, and I started to keep it with me because it made me feel safe. Maybe we should pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. That seemed to lighten the house. Even the lighting in the room seemed to be brighter after we prayed. It made things better. Amen. But for how long? Soon after his 17th birthday, Carl decides to create a space of his own in the cellar, far from his parents and siblings. It looked like a Victorian-style lady's glove. Hello? Someone there? This had to be Sylvia. I wanted to find out what is going on in our house. What is it she wants? Later, Carl attempts to make contact with the owner of the glove. I started to research the paranormal in earnest. I wanted to read everything I could find out about it. Through my research, I had discovered a formula for raising a spirit, trying to get a manifestation, isolate the spirit so that we could see what it was, try to communicate with it, try to know what it needed from us. I'm calling upon the spirit of this house, Sylvia, to make her presence known. This was its chance. If it wanted to get a message through, it could do it then. I'm calling upon you to know why you are here. Show yourself.
Carl Johnson has just made contact with the ghost haunting his house. I saw the figure of a woman. Her hair was pulled up and into a bun on the top of her head. She was walking towards me, silently. My blood ran cold. I was just transfixed there. Suddenly, Carl makes a realization. The pieces fell together. It was a woman. I found that glove upstairs that disappeared mysteriously. The name Sylvia had come through the spirit board. This had to be the same entity, the same spirit. But what does Sylvia want? Seeking answers, Carl returns to the spirit board. His twin brother, Keith, refuses to participate. I was not going to join them. My brother and sister, however, would determine that they were going to receive a sign of Sylvia's presence. To me, that was going a little too far. Something's wrong. I can feel it. She needs our help. Help? Yeah. We need to communicate with her. We are calling upon Sylvia. Why do you need our help? She's not answering. Let's just go play outside. D, E, A, D, H, death. Oh my God. By spelling out death, I think it was just trying to frighten us and it worked. The spirit that was talking to us was not Sylvia. It was something darker, something menacing, something we wanted no part of. The teens vow to never use the spirit board again. It was just becoming hostile and threatening, so it was time to put it away, leave it alone. And they can only pray it leaves them alone. One night, I was awoken by the sound of something being dragged across the floor, but I didn't see anything. It was definite enough to disturb me. I knew I wasn't going to go back to sleep there, so I went upstairs to finish my sleep on the couch in the living room. So I was laying on the couch, trying to get back to sleep. And then the thumping started. Banging on the roof. It became louder and louder until it was shaking the whole house. Stop, Dad! What's going on? I don't know. I couldn't sleep downstairs and I heard the bang. We kept hearing these loud bangs. We didn't know where they were coming from. The first thing we logically thought about is an intruder. Somebody's on our house for some reason. Somebody's pounding and stomping on, on the roof of our house at night. Someone's trying to break in. Let's check it out. It was 
getting to the point where I was getting scared because if everybody else heard it, then there's something there. It's okay. It stopped. Whatever it was. I'm gonna go get the boys. Wait right here. Okay? feeling of someone behind me. One by one, the Johnson children are being targeted by a mysterious entity. Two hands were on my back. In that very moment when I felt it, I was terrified. We heard her cry out. We came in, and there she was, very upset, very frightened about it. Sweetie! Something! Something pushed me, two hands. I don't, I don't know. I realized at that point that whatever I came in contact with was evil. Now it had hurt somebody. It had pushed my sister down. What was it capable of? What did it want? It was becoming more invasive. It was hurting people. For months, the kids have been trying to convince their parents that their house is haunted. Do you believe us now? Everything that's been happening is real. You kids, you just have a wild imagination. But then how do you explain what we all just experienced? I mean, you heard it too. Our house is haunted. And if you aren't gonna do anything about it, then I will. Let's all just go back to bed, all right? It's been a long night. My brother and I realized that if anything was going to be done to stop this activity, we couldn't explain. It was up to us. My parents didn't really believe it or they didn't want to believe it. So we had to do something about it. We had to take control of this. Looking for answers, Carl and Keith seek out paranormal experts. My brother and I joined a paranormal investigating group based at Rhode Island College. We wanted to know what other people were experiencing. During one seminar, they meet a budding investigator who believes he can help the Johnson family. He has blood ties to Lorraine and Ed Warren, the paranormal couple who inspired the movie The Conjuring. My name is John Zaffis, and I've been involved with the paranormal for 43 years. Being involved with the paranormal field, I was a very fortunate young man. Ed and Lorraine Warren are my aunt and uncle, and I had worked with them for many, many years. And that was a golden opportunity. I appreciate you coming. I hope we can put these stories to rest once and for all. I can't say my parents were altogether receptive about his visitation. My mom advised my father, why don't you let them do what they're going to do? Maybe they'll find something. Maybe they'll be able to help. It couldn't hurt. 
So I understand Carl, Keith, and Cindy have been experiencing activity in the house. When did the activity increase? I guess when we started talking with Sylvia. Sylvia? Yeah, through the spirit board. Carl even saw her. A spirit board? It's a game I got him for Christmas. I even had one as a girl. The spirit board, it came very popular in the 70s. Everybody was purchasing them. You would get them as Christmas gifts, not realizing that they were opening up the doors to the spirit realm. I hate to break it to you, but it isn't just a game. When you use a spirit board, you can open a door to the other side. It's very dangerous. It's not the board itself and the game that causes the problem. It's the individuals. We're the catalyst. We bring the spirit in. Need to have a look around. Is that okay? Sure. Although John is not psychic, he attempts to detect the presence of a spirit by feeling for drafts and temperature changes. There was definitely this heavy presence in one of the rooms. Suddenly, John senses a female spirit. That was Sylvia. She had a long gray dress on and she had a, a bun. The spirit appears to be in distress, as if she has something urgent to communicate. Sylvia was definitely trying to warn the children. Why? What is she trying to warn them of? John finds himself drawn to the cellar. It felt very heavy. I felt a lot of dread. I felt like something really did not want me down in that basement. For more haunting, visit TLC.com. Paranormal investigator John Zaffis has just encountered two entities in the Johnson home, and one is not friendly. It wasn't Sylvia that was causing the haunting down there. I definitely feel that it was something demonic. Carl, you were right in thinking that Sylvia was trying to contact you. I was? So you're saying that this Sylvia 
is real? Yes. It's a real human spirit. She has been trying to warn you all about a demon. A demon? When he said the word demon, it was then something formidable. It was no longer fun and games. It was something unholy, something dark and hateful. Hearing this from John made everything real for my parents at that point. It all crystallized for them. How can this be true? Mr. and Ms. Johnson, it is true. These things exist. I believe when the activity became more aggressive, that was the demon trying to attack your family. How did it get here? It was just as I feared. Both entities came through the spirit board. By Carl and his sister communicating with the spirit board, they not only allowed Sylvia to come through, but they allowed something in on a demonic level, a very negative level. I told you both it was dangerous. I was rather upset that my brother and sister didn't readily take my advice about the dangers of communicating with the spirit board. We were just kids, and we got this board, and we had no idea, you know, what was going to happen. The family wastes no time finding an expert. In the name of Jesus Christ, and by the power of his blood, we contacted a priest from a local Episcopal church. He was gracious enough to come and perform a blessing of the home. He offered Christian prayers and holy petitions that the demon should leave that house, should be expelled and not return. God, I pray your blessing upon this house and upon everyone that lives here. over. They're gone. The spirit of Sylvia and the demonic entity are gone. In that moment, I felt like we had our house back. I felt like whatever spirit was demonic that was there no longer had power over us to attack us ever again. It was like a dark cloud had lifted. I felt at peace. From that day forward, the teens make a pact never to use the spirit board again. The family is able to resume life as usual without any further paranormal experiences. The years went on. Of course, we grew up. Eventually, we moved out of the house. We got married. My parents continued living on in the house for many years afterwards. They had a peaceful existence living in that house for the remainder of their time there. But their brush with the paranormal has changed them forever. My brother and I went on to become paranormal investigators, very established. We are demonologists. We have been able to help a great number of people in similar situations. We work together to this day to try to bring awareness that the dangers of spirit communication are a reality. This experience showed me that there is more to this world than meets the eye, that everything is not as it seems.